We're River Sang Wild, and you're watching Music, Music Alive, Alive North, North Shore, Shore on BevCan. Welcome to Music Alive North Shore, your in-home live concert cable TV show. My name is Paul Norman, and I'm your host. For those of you who've seen the show before, you know that we feature some of the North Shore's best bands, bringing them right into your home for your listening pleasure. Today, we're lucky to be joined by River Sang Wild, one of North Shore's new bands that feature a bit of distortion with a persona of groovy pop. So sit back, relax, or get up and dance to the cool tunes of... River Sang Wild. Let's see what you got, boys. All right, guys. We're River Sang Wild. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is a single we got out on Spotify and Apple Music. So if you guys like it, please go check us out. Um, it's called Love Train. <laughs> So 
Thank you guys for sticking around. This next one's called What's Left of You.
All right, thank you guys for listening still. Uh, this next one's a little more mellow, and uh, it's called Midnight Lights. Take me out, take me out into 
All right, this next one we're going to play is uh, another one we just put out actually a couple weeks ago. Um, it's out on Apple Music and Spotify. And uh, if you guys like what you're hearing, please go check us out at riversangwild.com and like us on social media. Do us a big help. We got our Facebook, Instagram, uh, Venmo is on there if you want to support us. Uh, this one's called Rewind. <laughs> Just came from a time You got a light on your mind A light on your mind And it's alright I had it out And you need to find A way off a mile And I pray you don't stay You got a light on your mind A light on your mind And it's
she love me Ooh, she love me She love me
This next one's called Bloodlines.
Hi, this is Paul Norman. I'm here on the set of the Music Alive North Shore with River Sang Wild. Wow, did we just hear a fantastic set by these guys? And uh, we're going to talk with them a little bit about um, their musical influences and uh, what they, um, uh, how they have become so good and uh, no, well known in the region. Uh, great show, guys! Thanks so much for. Uh, uh, putting on a hot set for us. Well, Thanks thank for you. having us. I thank hope you. we didn't scare anybody away. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> no, we. Uh, <laughs> you guys were rocking and rolling, and uh, it was it was perfect. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I find interesting with younger bands is to hear a little bit about uh, your background, how you came on the scene, how you got to know each other. Um, I understand uh, that um, Harrison, you and Brad have. Um, uh, worked together for a number of years in uh, different bands. Is that right? Oh yeah, and we're already sick of each other. Okay, well <laughs> we're gonna. Uh, and then we're, we just decided to move in together. I don't yeah, know we're why. Just get, we're just gonna hit into I, it hard. I guess so. But yeah, we were in a we were in a band before this one called Victim of Circumstance. It was a, a trio, and um, him and I came from that. And that that band happened to disperse in 2020, in about June of 2020. And uh, about a couple months later, we. Um, I, I was just like trying to figure out what the heck was going on. I was like taking fill in gigs and stuff like that. And then um, Brad just met like randomly was just like, hey, why don't we get this? Hey, man, ha- I still like, just want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Why right. are we just playing? <laughs> Quick, <laughs> and, get somebody together. Let's throw and, it together. <laughs> and we knew we knew Danny from the, the past because we, we played with his last band uh, or he's still in that 43 Church Street is uh, another band that he's in. And we, we ended up getting to know them over the three and a half years or so that the last band of ours was together. And uh, he just mentioned one day, he's just like, hey, why don't we get Danny and see if he wants to come over and jam sometime and like get something together, you know? So that was back in uh, the, right when the pandemic hit in the summertime? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. Yeah. And August. you weren't afraid of uh, getting together and infecting each other? You just said, let's, uh, we'll deal with whatever the outcome is and let's make some music. Yeah. 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 Didn't really, we didn't really even. We're like, we're on the phone. stay home anyways. <laughs> hey, you sneezing? No? Okay, we're good. All right, let's All go. Right. Even if you are, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, what do you think, Danny? When these guys called you up, it was uh... I was like, "Oh, jeez." <laughs> no, I was, I was pumped. I was pumped, and I was like, "Let's go up there. Let's do something." So, uh, here we are. That's we went up. We started jamming, and we didn't even know if it was gonna click. I mean, we had played together a couple times, but uh-huh. you know, you don't know if it's gonna actually work in a in a project. So we just jammed for a little while, and then seemed to be working we, ne- we we said we were going to have a conversation about if it was clicking or not we never really did we just started booking gigs so i guess that was a yes <laughs> yeah yeah all right that's well, we cool kinda, didn't we when we got together too we didn't really go like oh we're going for this sound right no it's just kind of like whatever we whatever yeah. happens happens pick some songs to play and whatever is written is written and play that until we get sick of it and then move on <laughs> well that's kind of interesting because you've you've both you've had different bands that you've come from different styles that you uh, sort of were used to. Um, was uh, 43 Church very different than uh, what these guys were doing in The Victim of Circumstances? Yes and no. I mean, it was it was definitely different. We, we did a little more um, a little more mellow music, a little more po- uh, poppier style music. Uh-huh. But but we did do some rock and some I Zeppelin. There was like, like some hard country. There was, there was some cross. Too. There was some cross, yeah. but, but it was... We didn't, you know, we, we had a little more of a, we, we move a little bit more in, in and out of different styles, whereas they kind of had their hmm. style and they did it. And, and he kind of you know? had, you guys kind of, you had a dual vocal thing too with, yeah. with a female vocalist. Female and a male vocalist. So that was kind of yeah. a nice little change. So um, so in terms of uh, artists that uh, have influenced you over the career, over your career, all everything that you're doing now has had some, um, you know, you can look back to uh, people that you emulated, people that you really enjoyed. And um, is there any any bands, artists that um, Brad you found to be uh, really influential in terms of uh, helping shape your musical style? Ooh, well, just a quick rundown. Okay, so first <laughs> musical acknowledgement of me going, wow, it actually makes sense. Was of all things, Australian Pink Floyd on TV. It was like some weird Access TV <laughs> thing. I was just like, no, okay. Access TV isn't weird. Just, no, just for well, the record No, but here. it was just like, what? for whatever reason, I remember seeing it and going like, wow, this is this is actually kind of cool. It was like maybe like six years old or something like that. So I was like, okay, got into music, kind of progressed uh-huh. through that. Then high school, uh, played saxophone first before uh, okay. doing bass. And then bass just happened because my brother played guitar. And I was like, oh, well, I got to do something. So... Wound up playing bass, trickled forward, you know, did all the school band stuff. 
um, like jazz band too. Yeah, yeah. like d- the 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 creme de la creme of Alvern High School. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, these guys go all the way back to the high school days. Oh yes. So Harrison, what about you? If there has been any uh, any any uh, artists that have had a significant impact on you, and who have they uh, who have they been? Definitely, like as far back as I can remember. Well, well, I mean, like I definitely like pay respects to my my father too because he is a guitar player and he kind of was the musician in the family and he he got he got me into music and i he was just like trying to figure out what i what i would stick to and i just happened to stick to the drums and because he taped your hands to the sticks yeah actually it, it <laughs> was videos of it. it was real child abuse um <laughs> But he uh, he he was really into Rush, and uh, I I got I I got brought up on Rush and and watching Neil Peart and um, another he, he's huge influence of mine, especially from early on, and then uh, Dennis Chambers, sort of a uh, more funk fusion type uh, guy, and he incredible. I still like watch his stuff today, and then like fast track throughout the years, I kind of like went through this weird metal phase in middle school and. Unmentionable. Was, yeah, it was uh, not in middle, and <laughs> not a good. Time. Uh, oh, Mika Beza. But um, <laughs> it was it was like metal in the middle school and uh, early high school, and then it kind of like flourished into more of like a rock thing, like classic rock and whatnot. Uh-huh. And I, I I listened to a lot of more alternative stuff like um, the Black Keys, Arctic Monkeys, and um, I mean any any bands that are sort of in that realm now. I got I had a huge kick with like Soundgarden and Matt Cameron, the drummer of mm-hmm. Soundgarden, like. Still one of my favorite drummers of all time to this day, but like I, I've kind of done this with music styles, so I've I've kind of like grown to appreciate a lot of different things. I think. Okay, but, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you've um, how you compose the music that we heard today. Uh, is this a collaborative effort? With where do these ideas sort of come from, Danny? Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, sort of the, the composition process? Um, it's it's definitely collaborative. I mean, I I think we I I come with a lot of the maybe a, not all but a, a, a lot of the ideas that we have. You know, the the songwriting, the melody, mm-hmm. and, and the chord structure. But then once these guys get a hold of it, it it becomes a whole new animal. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of probably starts with just an acoustic guitar and a and a mumbling of words that is a melody and then all of a sudden I bring it home here and it becomes this thing and then it takes me way too long to put lyrics to it and well, well, uh, I think my favorite is when you show us it and you're like a little tentative and you're like wow I thought you would have actually hated that yeah that's no, how I a lot of it goes actually do that's that. how a lot of it goes <laughs> when, but, so it's you, the lyrics that come last um, generally not, not generally I mean if it, okay. if, it, if it hits it hits but I, I don't if I have to sit down and do it, it's probably not going to happen for a while. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Well, the song Love Train that we put out back yes. in January, when you first wrote that, that was more of like a... Um, yeah, acoustic. And it, was... it had like a more of a poppy backbeat to it. And then uh-huh. it kind of like... Kind of got switched my up. My favorite thing was the synth in the back. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just me in my bedroom with a piano, and that's how everything happens. He, he, no, he, yeah. Well, it, it was. But it's. I remember yeah. we were sitting in your truck outside of like Wegmans, I think, in like Burlington when you show, showed us. Yeah, and Wegmans. I was like, I gotta show you <laughs> the song. Or Wegmans, whatever. Some <laughs> same thing. I think Brad's gonna hate it. I have to show you the song. And Brad was the biggest champion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, so uh, I'd also like to hear a little bit about, um, you know, how um, what songs you've uh, released. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what's out there for uh, your fans to listen to, and uh, any um, plans for uh, doing some recording in the future. All right. Well, I think right now we only have two songs out. Most recently was Rewind, which was definitely a more um, upbeat pop type of thing which is honestly really cool but still uh hits hard i i would like to say that um that was what july early july yeah, a couple weeks mm-hmm. whenever whenever you see this it was july or something like that <laughs> and then uh love train came out in january yeah it was january. yeah january which is kind of funny because we really started like an entire year prior to that and it took us an entire year to get a solid recording out which is nice <laughs> but you know what here we are and then talking about future recording that about every three months or so that we've been booking time at this uh, really great studio, Mad Oak Studio down in Austin, Mass. Producer okay. Benny Grotto. He's yeah. the man. So we've been slowly chipping away at that. But, you know, startup band, we got to really work to pocket the money to do it. So we've only been able to bite off here and there. And that's why uh-huh. it took so long for the first one, because we really needed to, like, actually acquire stuff through gigging and, you know, couldn't just pay out of pocket. So 
slow and steady. Well, uh, it's inter- you know, gigs really are the uh, the backbone for uh, getting you guys and other s- new bands started and in the right direction with recording. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the gigs that you've had that have been memorable ones, either because of the location you played, the audience, the group you played with. Mm-hmm. I think for, for me, at least, uh, I think it was April. Yeah, mid-April. Um, one of my favorite gigs that we've ever done was at this place called Blue Ocean Music Hall in Salisbury. And that was, uh, we were opening up for a band um, called Fortune. And those guys are freaking awesome. Definitely suggest you go check out their stuff if you get a chance. But um, we, we opened up for them there. It ended up being a sold out crowd. I was about, I think it was like 500 people or so. So that was definitely the biggest crowd, like listening crowd that we've played in front of. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that was very memorable for me. They didn't us. So that's true. Yeah. That must Luckily. Been some, either they, they didn't pay attention enough or they actually. No, they didn't. You, you got to pay attention to you guys. You guys uh, <laughs> capture your interest immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that one. And I honestly, I really like a lot of the Boston shows, like uh, um, in Cambridge at the Middle East. It's kind of like this smaller like almost sort of grungy club but it's it's awesome it's been there forever and well it's... yeah what is the room we played called the corner yeah and yes it's a corner yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the smallest stage we've ever like probably played on but we hey it, it works work. it's yeah, fun. yeah some of the nights are pretty fun and there's a window behind you so it's like usually you have like something blocking in the back nope it's a window so wow. you get all the crazies anybody that wants to come by it is perfect so, so it's a really good time there. I think uh, Breakaway is also pretty fun. Yeah. Breakaway is always my favorite. I'm, I'm very close to the people at Breakaway. They've always been real good to me. Um, got in there with uh, 43 Church Street early on and, and Brian Mace. Um, worked with him for a lot of years. Well, technically, too, that's um, kind of where we met at the Brian Mace. Yeah, actually, yeah the Brian Mace open night. That's actually yeah. where we met. I never, oh, really? I didn't, that's yeah. actually, How many years ago? That was, too many? That was, that was 2017. Was, yeah, three or four years ago. Yeah. But I've been working with Brian for a long time. He he's helped me tremendously. So um, he introduced me to Kook Lari, another North Shore native who totally transformed my guitar playing. Lives up to so, the name. So Brian got me in with uh, Barry Gaudreau. We we'll work with the engine room. Oh, that's fantastic! You're so, talking you know, about some real uh, North Shore all stars. North Shore Greater Boston, legends. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this is such a hotbed. Uh, you know, for a young group to be able to have had some of those people as mentors. Yeah. I'm sure it's been. Uh, accelerated the the growth and the development of your styles significantly yeah. i met the guys from fortune through brian which is how we got the gig because i knew them yep for, for blue ocean so you know a he's good word here a, and there goes a good, long way good word goes a long way mm-hmm. <laughs> okay that's great um so uh how can uh your fans find out a little bit about um what's going on uh with upcoming gigs how they can see you live and um keep uh, track of um what River saying Wild is up to. Um, the I'd, I'd say well, we just started a website probably in I think when we, when Love Train came out so in January. So if you go to www.riversangwild.com, you can find all of our um, our music, our shows, um, videos, and all that kind of stuff on there. Uh, we post pretty regularly too on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, you'll see us like kind of post our list of shows for the year on certain posts and whatnot so yeah it's a little more intimate than a website where you can't respond to people it's just like oh here's info and people can do what they want but you know facebook or instagram you can actually like interact yeah and we post kind of cool we post weekly too where we're playing so fantastic as long as long as you're up to like you check out our page even once a week like you'll be able to figure out where we are and what we're doing so. All right. Well, I would encourage everybody to check out this page at least once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming in today and uh, entertaining us with uh, your your talent. I, I am constantly amazed by some of the younger bands who have not been playing that long and have really been able to create their own style and uh, following. And, uh, you know, thanks so much for, uh, for entertaining us with this great set tonight. Well, Absolutely. Paul, thanks, thanks for you, having man. us. Seriously. You're welcome. So uh, look forward to uh, this show coming out uh, and future Music Live North Shore shows coming out on uh, your local access cable station, uh, also on the Music Live North Shore YouTube channel, and uh, I'm sure you'll see uh, some of the clips on the River Sang Wild music channel. So um, take care and uh, have a good night. Yeah.